Okay, so this this hook is a size 2 aught in that Daiichi 3111. I'm going to take some 6 aught white uni thread and just dress my fly about 3 quarters of the way down. The tail on this is going to be a, a minnow, but the tail on it's going to be craft fur, and I'm going to use two different colors. Okay, so I've gotten a clump of craft fur, and I'm going to grab it by the ends and just pull out the under fluff. And then I'm going to take the other side, kind of pull out some of the fibers that are just way too long, leaves us with a clump about like that. So I'll tie that in so that it's, you know, the longest I can. It's roughly three times the length of the hook shank. Tie it in just like that. And then we're going to take a clump of chartreuse and do the same thing. So I'm going to take the chartreuse and lay it right on top of the tan. And I cut it at an angle because I'm going to wrap the wrap my thread down, and uh, we're going to add some some other components right here. So, with this tail, I'm going to add some barring. So I'm going to just take a brown sharpie and uh, just one swipe on each side. That's just fine. Okay, now I'm going to take a piece of chartreuse schloppen, and I've prepared it so I can tie it in by the tip. And I'm just going to take that, tie it right where I want to start wrapping it. And now before I start wrapping this, I'm going to take the fibers and crease those back so it it's more probable that it will start going the way I want it to once I start wrapping. And the comb is always a nice little tool to brush through fibers that you put in to kind of make it uh, puff out where the where each fiber is supposed to be. So. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of root beer palmer chenille. And we'll just do about four turns of that, four or five. And what the palmer chenille does is it adds a little bit of flash, but it also gives the head of the fly a little bit of body similar to the low fat minnow. So we're going to put bruiser blend over the top of this and the the palmer chenille will kind of keep it flared out a little bit. Okay for the head of this fly we're going to be using dirty chartreuse bruiser blend junior so the fibers are a little bit shorter than regular bruiser blend. I'm going to take the fibers and just kind of preen those stack them up a little bit get them lined up nice and even and then I want this to be a a little bit longer to go a little bit further back in the fly so all I'm gonna do is instead of tying it in right at the midpoint of the bruiser blend I'm, gonna, I'm just going to adjust it a little bit further forward and when I tie this in it's gonna be right at the eye of the hook so I'm gonna do the same color on the bottom. Real nice and snug wraps here. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this and fold it back. You're gonna pull one the top down, put pull your thread up, and then grab the bottom as well and now hold them both in place. And if you create a nice pronounced head right here, it will keep those fibers pushed back. Now we're going to take our little comb and brush that out. 
Okay, so you see that that's a real bushy, bulky head. We're going to glue eyes on the side of that so it'll tame it down a little bit. But before we do that, I've been messing with a marker technique with some bruiser blind flies. Uh, so I'm going to take a brown marker and just color my thread. And then I'm going to kind of just start blending some brown into the fly. So it goes from dark to light. And as you get further out, just kind of barely touch your dubbing with the marker and it gives it a nice, you know, blended effect. This is the artist in me coming out. You see that's a, a nice little blend of, of brown. Okay, now before I put the eyes on here, I'm going to brush it one more time just to make sure that that color blends a little bit better. And uh, now on this fly I'm going to put some oversized eyes on it. Now anytime you use eyes that are bigger than what's intended for the fly, it's important that you kind of put them higher up on the hook shank. So if I were to take this eye and stick it on like this, it's going to eat up my hook gap. So you want to make sure that the eye is a little bit higher up on the fly so you don't uh, take away that nice hook gap on this Daiichi 3111. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the fly on its side and I'm going to use tear mender again. Uh, as you can see, trust the bish. Wyco Flyco, one of our followers, he said uh, Easy E might not agree with that. <laughs> that made me laugh quite a bit. Anyway, shout out to Wyco Flyco. Tie some good flies. All right. I'm just going to add a little bit of tear mender. And if you add some and then wait for a second and then add a little bit more, it gives it an opportunity to seep down into the dubbing. Okay, so I've got both eyes on. Now I'm just going to take and squish those eyes together for quite a bit in order for that tear mender to set up. And that's pretty much it. That's, that's pretty much the fly. That tear mender will look kind of white and milky right when you put it on but it'll dry for the most part transparent so it won't affect the color of your fly if you wanted to you could come in here also and add some red to the throat and the red and brown will blend together pretty nicely just kinda of like that um, anyway Super simple pattern. Uh, it's made mostly of synthetics. It's going to last you forever. Um, but give it a try. Throw it at some snook or any other fish that eats bait fish. Mm -hmm.